Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for joining this session on fundraising in stormy waters. Um, my name is Ferdinand and I'm uh, part of the venture capital uh, practice of YPOC. And yeah, in the next uh, 15 minutes or so, we're uh, going to take a brief look of, um, at the current venture funding environment and then make two deep dives uh, into two topics. Uh, first, um, down rounds and then the um, management duties uh, in, when fundraising in um, distressed times. So, um, yeah, let's, let's take a look at the uh, current numbers of financing rounds and also volume of financing rounds. So, um, I think it's no surprise we're not um, back at the level of the years 2021 and 2022. Um, so, but at least uh, 2023 turned out to be on the same level in terms of um, a number of financing rounds and also volume, approximately the same level as um, 2020. And also um, on the right side, you see the figures as of um, uh, the first half of 2024 and it seems to be fairly in line with uh, what we saw in 2023. So um, yeah, seems to be, uh, let's, let's see what the second half of 2024 brings, but seems to be quite similar as 2023. And this is Germany. Um, if you take a look at um, Europe, um, we have quite similar situation, also peaks in 2021, 2022, and um, afterwards it seems to be, um, yeah, same level as, as before these extraordinary years. Um, I think this is also in line with, with uh, what we see um, from, from in our transactions that we advise on. Um, it's a bit less volume, but it's also a bit less speed, so um, investors will think twice before signing a term sheet, and due diligence takes a bit longer than um, two years ago. Um, but um, the yeah, million dollar question, of course, remains what will um, the next 12 or 24 months look like? Um, and I think um, we have some positive indications that um, this can um, yeah, increase again. Um, for example, the number of startups that are founded in Germany um, that, uh, that increased um, in 2024 compared to 2023. And also, um, yeah, many of you will have heard about, for example, um, the WIN initiative that was just agreed upon by the German government, uh, KfW, and, and many other companies um, which are planning to, to invest up to 12 billion until 2030 in the German ecosystem. Um, and um, yeah, also certain industries, uh, which, which all of you are aware, like AI or, or defense, um, also peak out. So there are positive indications. On the other hand, we also have um, some challenges. Um, for example, the insolvencies of startups increased um, compared to 2023. It's uh, an increase about in a two-digit figure. Um, and also, uh, when preparing for this um, session, I found um, this illustration. Mm. And I think it fairly shows uh, some of the um, challenges that startups will fa face over the next uh, 12 months. So we have um, yeah, quite a good mix of geopolitical instability or lack of funding, also talent um, shortage. I guess um, it's quite a fair summary and so um, it's no surprise that it will be yeah, challenging times um, and interesting to see. Um, where we are in, in a year's time. Um, so um, this leads us to the first deep dive on, on down rounds. Um, I think it's also no, no surprise in that based on the findings we just saw that also the number of down rounds and flat rounds um, increased. So just we are, that we're all on the same page. Down round meaning a financing round of a startup which is below the valuation of the last financing round. Flat round meaning that it's um, the exact same valuation as the last round. And this is the situation in the US. Uh, you'll see on the right side, um, 2023 and 2024, that we have a significant increase in down rounds and flat rounds, percentage-wise of all financing rounds. And we have quite a um, similar situation also in Europe. Um, so um, yeah, increase of number of down rounds. So now um, to, the, to the fun legal topics of down rounds. Um, what were our key observations um, from the last 18 months? Um, 
we saw that um, there were um, a couple of ways um, that investors and companies tried to, to avoid down runs. For example, uh, one way was um, rather entering into convertible loan agreements than doing priced equity rounds. And so for those of you who are not familiar with that instrument of a convertible loan agreement, it's quite simple. It's an, a loan agreement, as the name suggests, uh, which the investor gives to the company, um, which at a later point in time converts into equity. And there's one great advantage of uh, this instrument that um, you don't have to agree with your investor on a valuation of the company because typically the loan converts at the valuation in the next financing round and only converts at the time of the next financing round. So you can postpone a valuation discussion and thereby avoiding a priced down round. Um, usually the investors will request a valuation cap, so you agree on a maximum valuation, but that's much more or much easier um, than to agree on a, on a fixed valuation um, as you would do in a priced equity round. Um, we also saw more internal financing rounds, which uh, probably is not too much of a surprise as the, um, and, and that means that um, the existing investors um, were rather um, willing to, to provide further funds to the company than external investors. Um, um, yeah, probably, or of course, due to the fact that they all already have skin in the game and so might be more willing to provide additional funds than an external investor coming in. Um, then we also saw um, further interesting um, creative solutions to, to try to avoid a down round, um, like a technical down round, um, if, if you had a new investor coming in. Um, for example, by, by agreeing to more investor-friendly terms um, other than the valuation. So, um, for example, the investor and the company would agree on a valuation which is not um, a, a technical down round, so is at least the valuation of the last round, but um, you would give the investor certain other um, terms, for example, a 2x liquidation preference. Um, that means usually the investor has a, a um, one-time liquidation preference, which means that he will get back his investment in case of an exit before any lower ranking shareholders, so namely the founders, will receive any proceeds of the exit. And in case of a 2x liquidation preference, the investor will simply get twice the amount of his in initial investment bef before any other um, shareholders participate in the exit. Um, another way that we, uh, that a down round could be avoided is, is, for example, agreeing on certain milestones. So um, again, you would avoid the down round, but agree on milestones. Um, and if the company fails to achieve these milestones, the investor will get additional shares, um, so um, basically resulting in a lower valuation, um, but at least giving the company and the existing shareholders the chance to um, avoid the down round. And quite similarly, similarly um, sometimes um, the investors are granted options under a separate warrant agreement, um, which basically has the same logic that under certain circumstances the investor would receive additional um, shares in the company. And lastly, um, I think another, another solution um, sometimes is also that you have a mixed transaction which is um, partly a primary transaction, so the investor will invest and uh, receive um, newly issued shares uh, for, for a certain share price, but also um, simply buy at a discounted price shares from existing um, investors. And so that is um, agreeable to all parties, that might also be a way to um, grant the new investor a discounted share price while still um, having at least the primary investment um, not at a, um, a valuation which is um, below last round's valuation and which of course is helpful for the equity story of the company. I think in, um, in our experience from, from down rounds and, and also just other financing rounds that we advised on uh, in financially distressed times, um, it's important from a founder perspective not to start the fundraising too late because we saw several rounds where um, the founders had their backs against the wall um, since they 
were close to insolvency or just close to, to not having any liquidity anymore and had to negotiate uh, with the investors in such a situation, which of course is uncomfortable and um, often leads to a scenario where um, the investor can dictate the terms. So from a founder perspective, it might make sense to start fundraising early and also from, of course, the perspective of the existing investors, just to have a better negotiation point on the power um, vis-a-vis -vis, um, any new investors. Um, sometimes um, this can also, uh, the threat of insolvency can also turn out beneficial for the founders. We also saw, th saw that in a round where um, of all shareholders, only one was willing to, to provide additional funding to the company. Um, but he said he's only, only willing to do so if all of the other shareholders um, transfer a certain um, percentage of their shares to the founders to keep them incentivized. So the founders, of course, were happy with that. Um, that was an extraordinary case, but also shows that um, close, to, close to the insolvency, the negotiation powers can change quite dynamically. Um, and this is always a scenario where it's um, um, where very tough negotiations and um, yeah, sleepless nights for the founders. So um, try not to do uh, such fundraising on the on the last mile, but try to to plan a bit ahead, uh, especially in times where this might be a down round because down rounds always have difficult discussions. Um, the new investor tries to come in and a and a valuation which is as low as possible, while the existing shareholders try to hold up the valuation, so these are tough negotiations and take time, take more time than the um, usual financing rounds. Um, I just already, already mentioned that um, in such a scenario the um, founders might be under pressure and this um, brings us to, to the second deep dive, um, the, the duties of management which typically are the founders um, in times where liquidity is tight. Um, so when you're in a situation where you have to fundraise um, while uh, liquidity is already tight, um, you might want to make yourself familiar with the um, obligations, the legal obligations you have as a managing director. And um, one general obligation is that you uh, must always um, yeah, monitor the financial situation of your company, uh, which is probably not too surprising. Uh, but especially in times of crisis, you have to get into that um, very, very deeply and, and closely monitor, especially the liquidity situation. And again, um, start fundraising early enough to avoid a scenario where liquidity runs out. Um, also, you're legally obliged to, to analyze the causes why, um, uh, why you're in a crisis, so why liquidity becomes um, short and, 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 and evaluate options to, to, to solve this crisis. Um, and implement appropriate measures, being cost-cutting uh, measures or um, yeah, trying to, to raise new funds um, by convertible loans or a price round. And also, um, it makes a lot of sense to um, have a, a bit of a documentation. This doesn't have to be very sophisticated, but some kind of documentation so that you can prove in case uh, things go down that you uh, adhere to your management duties. And um, if you find yourself in a situation where liquidity, liquidity becomes so tight that you're considering or that you're um, realizing that you cannot meet certain payment obligations or that you have a negative equity and so on, um, then you also might um, want to, to assess whether you have a potential filing obligation. And filing obligation, I mean an uh, obligation to file for insolvency because in Germany we have a very strict insolvency regime um, with a mandatory filing obligation, which means that you must file for insolvency when there are certain grounds um, to file for insolvency. That's uh, very different. Well, it's, it's different to, to some jurisdictions in Europe. Many other jurisdictions have that as well, but uh, especially the US is very different. And um, so just a very, very high level uh, overview on, on, on when you have to file for insolvency. Basically, there are two grounds when you have to file for insolvency in Germany. The one is illiquidity, which basically means that um, your cash is not sufficient anymore to pay all the liabilities that become due. And um, liabilities can be uh, due invoices via your suppliers, but also wages towards your employees or taxes, which are often overlooked. Um, 
And so if you can't pay them anymore, then you might be technical illiquid uh, and, and might have to file for insolvency. And the other reason why you might need to file for insolvency is over indebtedness, which is a bit more um, tricky to assess because it's a two-step test. Um, so first you have to take a look at your balance sheet and you have to compare um, um, all of the assets um, with all of your liabilities. So it's not a comparison of cash and um, due liabilities and what you have to pay immediately, but it's rather a comparison of all assets, which includes cash, but also IP rights and products and anything else that you might have, and uh, compare that with all of the liabilities, whether you have to pay them or not. So even like liabilities on a convertible loans or which, which are not due yet, but which you only have to pay in a couple of years. And when this comparison leads to a negative equity, so basically meaning that the liabilities exceed your assets, um, you might be over indebted unless you still have a, um, still a going concern, which is um, an assessment of whether, basically of whether the company will survive the next 12 months which uh, many times is quite a difficult or tricky assessment. Um, so these are scenarios where um, you have to be um, just um, careful and aware of, and when um, you, you do fundraising um, in economically um, challenging times, um, this is always a work stream that um, yeah, is in parallel to the actual fundraising and um, can be quite burdensome for for founders, and but again, is um, a reason why I say that ideally you start fundraising early enough so that you don't have to worry about um, this as well. And I think the key takeaway from that is just uh, pay attention to your runway. Um, that um, ideally you don't have to deal with this parallel to fundraising, or at least if you become aware of any of these issues, that you um, take these into accounts um, early on. And so I think um, time is about over. So um, yeah, thank you very much for joining the session. And if you have any questions, feel free.